This is not my story, but my father's. It's a story he's told me many times while I was growing up. Here's what happened. It was the early 60s, and my father, an avid fisherman, was on vacation from his stock broker job in Dallas, Texas. He had decided to spend the rest of the summer fishing in the bayous of West Louisiana. He was out on the bayou in his little flat bottom boat with his fishing gear and cooler. He had been there for about two hours when he noticed a strange object in the water. It resembled a piece of driftwood, but as he got closer, it appeared to be moving a bit. He decided to try for a closer look and threw his anchor out to see if he could snag it. And to his utter astonishment, the piece of wood began moving away from him. It had now moved close enough for him to get a good look at it, what he thought actually might just be a sea monster. He soon realized that this creature was actually an eel, or some species of snake-like fish. However, this was not any eel he had ever seen before. This thing sprung out of the water, nearly trying to attack my father. This eel-like fish was also incredibly sized, over nine feet in length. It was a dark shade of blue, and my father said that when it reared up out of the water to attack him, he said its face was very distorted, like it was mutated, looked nothing like any creature he's ever seen. He never even considered trying to catch this thing. It tried to attack my dad for a brief moment before going back into the deep water. The story gets stranger. That evening, my dad decided to remove the anchor and leave. At only about 75 yards away from shore, he noticed yet another creature swimming toward his boat. This thing looked like the thing he saw earlier, but slightly smaller. He idly remarked that this could have been its child. This thing was more green than the other one, which was blue, and it suddenly leapt out of the water at him. This one didn't come close enough to actually reach him, because he had started up his motor and sped away as fast as he could. This occurrence spooked my dad so much that when he returned home to Dallas, without ever picking up his fishing gear, he said he never told anybody about these creatures at the time, and it was only much later that he even ever brought up the story. I'd like to believe my dad, but there's sometimes it sounds a little unbelievable. There are many skeptics out there who say they have explanations for everything. I'd like to know what you think. On November 25th, 2009, I was part of a crew on the commercial fishing boat, the Bounty, out of San Diego, California. We were fishing tuna, about 18 miles off the coast, and had already caught several bluefin. All the crew noticed something very large swimming towards the boat, far bigger than any whale we'd ever seen. We thought it was more bluefin, until we saw it wasn't shaped like tuna. It was like a strange eel with long slender body, maybe 25 feet long and four times as wide. The head, judging from under the water, was much whiter than any whale or dolphin. This thing swam directly under our boat in a very straight pattern going down deep towards the bottom, but not actually popping up for air. At that point, everyone on board could hear distinctly two very large gaseous bubbles slowly rising to the surface. Then, this thing swam off into the distance. When we saw the bubbles rise to the surface, I'm pretty sure that means it eats by sucking whatever fish or other ocean life there is near down enough into its large mouth, using those two air bubbles rising to the surface as a vacuum to suck up anything nearby. We were all blown away by this sighting. What kind of sea monster is that? How did it evolve? Those are questions we've been asking ourselves ever since. We all try to rule out what Fisher could have been, but none of us could ever really come to any sort of conclusion. It was totally different than anything we've ever seen before. 
if anyone has any idea of what this creature could be, please, let me know, along with your opinion. Thank you for reading. I grew up in Southern California and spent my whole life at the beach. I'd been surfing since I was a kid, but never expected to see something like this, something prehistoric. It was spring, on an overcast day with a few days of rain. I went out with some friends at work, and we were looking for some big waves. We got out far from shore, and by that time, it seemed pretty clear, so we began paddling into some surf when one of my buddies pointed ahead towards what looked like two dolphins playing. They were coming straight at us, which he didn't think they did because of their blunt noses or whatever. Then we realized these were no dolphins, but whatever they were had huge sets of jaws coming straight at us. The whole thing scared the hell out of all three of us, and we began paddling back to shore like crazy men. When I looked around after a while, my other two buddies, I found that one had disappeared completely, and the other one was lying face down in the water, 20 yards away. I pulled them aboard my surfboard, then paddled as fast as I could towards shore. Luckily, managed to beach it before he drowned. He said, he was so frightened by what he saw under the water, he instantly fainted, nearly drowning. We found my other friend about 15 minutes later, up on the beach, so the whole ordeal lasted about half an hour. I described what we saw to a biologist friend. They said it was probably some kind of prehistoric shark or sea serpent that still lives in the deep parts of the ocean. I mean, judging by what it looked like, it very well could have been. It was disturbing, to say the least. My buddy and myself are both still pretty shaken up over the whole ordeal. I guess I'll never look at the ocean in the same way ever again. Eric B., 31 years old, Santa Monica Beach. My grandfather served as a commander aboard a submarine back in World War II and has always relayed this story. Sadly, he passed away back in 2011, but this story of his, I'll never forget. Basically, for a period of time, this submarine was patrolling an area just outside the UK. I couldn't tell you exactly when during World War II this was, but just some time during those events. They got a motion of a very large object moving towards them that then very quickly diverted away. The only thing they could come up with was that it was an enemy vessel, except two things. Number one, an enemy vessel could not have been this large. And number two, an enemy vessel could not have gone this close and retreated, not without attacking. And there were no other Allied ships or vessels in the area that day, and it really makes me wonder what exactly they encountered out there in the ocean. My grandfather adds that it could have been some sort of large aquatic animal, or maybe a whale. This was a military vessel, so they would certainly have fired upon it if they thought it was an enemy submarine. They stayed in the area for another couple of days, but nothing else occurred, and there were no other sightings until then, at least the end of this tour. Some people may think that my grandfather was just making up stories to make himself seem like he has seen more action than he really did, as indeed many do, but I know him too well to believe that. He was always quite the patriot and wished he had served longer, but not by any means could he be accused of embellishing on any story. Even he believed that judging by what was read, that whatever it was was much larger than a whale. We're talking huge in size here. I can't tell you what exactly it was, but I'm sure anybody who has served or still does serve in any branch of the armed forces, while many have stories. Some may be just as exciting as this one, if not more so. It's not every day you get a sea monster sighting story from a submarine captain, after all. I was once on a 35-foot wooden shrimp boat built in the late 50s 
with a pair of 350 Chevy engines for power. Our captain that night, Captain Jim, had been working these boats for over 20 years. And most times, when the sea got this calm, he'd always come up to the bridge and tell me how flat it was out there. Not tonight, though. Tonight, he'd stayed down below his bunk, looking ill as could be, and told me not to bother him unless my butt was dragging behind me. It wasn't until later that night we could see this strange creature rise up out of the water, then quickly descend back down again. If Captain Jim wasn't feeling so sickly, he would have been down below standing watch, like always, telling me what fish I could expect to catch, and chances are, I probably wouldn't be writing this now, as they had never seen that thing. I was sitting on top of a tall platform called the Fly Bridge, overlooking the skiff, when I first noticed something moving under the water, about a hundred yards away off of our port side. This seemed strange because all night long, everything had been dead, so my attention was turned away from whatever this disturbance might be for a few minutes. I sat there for a few more minutes, then looked down to my right again, but this time it was much closer and appeared much bigger. I'm not the person who gets creeped out by many things, so at first I wasn't really sure what to think of this new development, but just then something large breached the surface about a hundred yards off of our port side and began slowly moving towards us revealing itself in greater detail with each passing second. Our boat was dead silent, besides the sound of water gently sliding up along our hull. So, even while it was a ways off from us, I could clearly hear its blubbery flippers slapping against the surface as it wove from side to side, searching for fish. And this was the first time I'd ever seen a creature like this with my very own eyes and it took me several moments to realize it wasn't a fish at all, but rather some kind of monster that vaguely resembled a whale, but was more clearly something much different altogether. I have no idea how long it was, or how long it swam there, perhaps circling our boat for almost an hour before finally descending back down into the depths below, taking most of the light above. Just then, Captain Jim heard the commotion coming from atop where I was standing, making his way over to the top of the steps leading up to the bridge. You see that? I said to him. I sure as hell did, he replied, with a look of terror on his face. It was pretty big, too. I could tell by the tone of his voice just how much this had shaken him, and when I looked over at his eyes, they were full of fear and bloodshot, almost as though he'd seen something truly terrible that had haunted him deeply. This was only one night in an otherwise long life of seafaring adventures, but it's impossible for anybody else to understand what it feels like to be alone out there, so far from land, and just to know there is something lurking beneath the surface, waiting to strike whenever they decide they're hungry enough to devour a whole boat of live fishermen.